Good morning, my friends. My name is Rama Jigmegia, so the non-sectarian monk, teacher, healer, and tantrika who blends Buddhism and Taoism, Sudra and Tantra, Theravada and Mahayana. Let's begin. What is renunciation? From a fundamentalist point of view, renunciation can be characterized by this saying, if it feels good, don't do it! And that's why we seldom see happy fundamentalists. From a liberal point of view, the, we have an opposite approach. We renounce not pleasures, but suffering. And because we find sufferings so detestable, we also renounce the causes of those sufferings. Allow me to give you an example. Let's pretend you hated the idea of having your hands be bloody, bruised, mangled, and mutilated. Then not only would you renounce having bloody, bruised, mangled, and mutilated hands, but you'd also renounce the cause of that, i.e. sticking your hand in a running garbage disposal. Things not to do. For instance, if you didn't like the idea of being battered, bruised, bloodied, and thrown into jail, then not only would you renounce being bloodied, bruised, thrown into jail, but it would also renounce the activity of running up to cops and trying to kick them in the shins. Because that never ends well. See, you see what we're doing here? We're, we're we're spotlighting the sufferings that we've seen in our own life, that we've seen in other people's lives, and saying, I don't want any more of this, or I don't want any of that. Therefore, I'm also going to think deeply and look for the look for patterns, look for a causal relationship between choices or the utterances or behaviors and the results. So in other words, we're renouncing sufferings and their causes. So now, let's get to it. This meditation should take approximately 1 minute and 20 seconds. And by meditation, I mean the, the set of contemplations. Left hand in lap, right hand in left, thumbs, uh, palms up, thumbs do not touch. We begin with the contemplative rhetorical question, how this not satisfy. You might say, that seems pretty negative. What about my pleasures in my life? Well, those don't satisfy. Think about the first time you had really good sex. Did you just kind of finish up and go, well, that, take care of that, that takes care of that. I never have to do that again. No, you probably couldn't wait to do it again. So, pleasure fails to satisfy. I'm a pain. Well, obviously pain is not satisfying. However you define pain. I'm reminded of the old joke. If a uh, masochist says, hurt me, hurt me, what does it say to say? No. <laughs> so, in that caricature, the masochist defines pain as not getting the stimulus they desire. Now, let's continue. How this not satisfy. Let's continue. Why turn from suffering's cause? There's a myth that all karma is bad karma. And uh, whatever misfortune we have is because of bad karma, because we're bad people, we've done bad things, and we, we just get what we got coming. Yeah, that's great if you're a fundamentalist, but as a liberal, let's explore this idea. Not, an every, not everything that feels uncomfortable is necessarily bad for us. Ever go to the gym? Ever work out? Ever do hill sprints? 
those can be uncomfortable, but they're terribly good for you. Ever been sick? Ever take medicine that tasted horrible? That was uncomfortable. It's good for you too. So not everything that's inconvenient or uncomfortable is necessarily bad. Consequently, not everything that's inconvenient or uncomfortable is punitive. Therefore, we can conclude that not everything that's uh, inconvenient or uncomfortable is a result of our bad karma. Now, if you're one of my students and at the end of every uh, meditation practice you dedicate your good karma or invest your good karma in your spiritual development and the spiritual development of others, then guess what? You're creating the karma causes for your evolution. What does that mean? That means that you are fueling the good karma that will help to evolve you. And as the bodybuilder, as the athlete, they'll tell you evolution not always comfortable. So it can be argued that sometimes that which is inconvenient or uncomfortable may be the result of our good karma. Pretty cool, huh? So now we know we are going to play with the contemplative question. How karma be quite just? Very nice. Our fourth and final contemplative question of this set is simply how this chance be precious. How can this inconvenience or this discomfort benefit me on the spiritual path? Of course the answer is because they can fuel our compassion trainings and our wisdom trainings. But let's get to the, the contemplation of hand. How this chance or how could this chance be precious? Put these four contemplations together and we get a one minute and 20 second practice, which is definitely bite-sized and doable. My friends, remember the next in-person or Skype series of classes is going to be to begin Monday, the 2nd of December. So if you're in the greater Los Angeles area and you want to attend, attend in person, or if you have a computer and you want to attend, attend over Skype, then register. Well, there's still space either in my Skype auditorium or the room I rent. You can register by using the link, the lamajigme.com link below. Now, if you have any comments or questions, or you just want to send me a great big cyber hug, then use the Facebook link below. May you and yours be healthy and happy for money, but may who? Bye-bye.